You know, first of all, uh, let me acknowledge somebody who has attended all the 11 development dialogues. My father, who is 93 years old. <laughs> who else has attended all the 11? Well, we have about 10 of them. Who are, who are diehards, who have been here for all the 11 development dialogues. And, and I want to welcome people from all over the world here. Next couple of days is going to be pretty exciting. So to set the stage, uh, let, me, let me talk about this collaboration and big bets. How did that idea come around? So the, you, know, the, you can split up the world into two parts. People who have disposable income and people who don't have disposable income. In India, it's probably 2080, and in US, it's probably about 8020. So people who have disposable income, they also have problems, and we need to solve their problems. But if they have a problem, they're Googling for solutions, right? And so they have options, and they can buy solutions. And so if you really want to have an impact on that part of the world, you, you really have to come up with something the world has not seen before. So innovation becomes terribly important, because it either has to be a new technology, new business plan, new way of approaching distribution, or, or one of those ideas. And so, and over the last 50 years, we've developed all kinds of mechanisms to make that market work. We have angel investors, venture capitalists, and uh, free markets, uh, distribution channels, Big Bazaar, Pantaloon, Amazon, Flipkart, all that kind of stuff. So, so that if you have a great solution that actually solves a problem, and you, you, you use that ecosystem, it has an impact. When you come to the other part of the population, where people don't have disposable income, and if you really take it down all the way down to people who live on $2 a day, they're just struggling to get through the day. So it's not like they're Googling for solutions and saying, where do I get clean water? Where do I get better education? And, and so, if you really want to solve their problems, we have to, number one, co-create the solution with them, because not too many of us, none of us in this room who all have disposable income can ever dare to understand their issues. And secondly, to spread that solution within those communities, we have to create capacity, because the mechanisms to distribute those solutions don't exist. And so, Co-creating the solutions and building the capacity to distribute those solutions has been sort of the theme of the sandbox for the last 10, 11 years. But as you can see, some of the solutions are, are getting pretty good. And so if we have to take those solutions on a large scale, because after all, this is a country with 1.2 billion people, and so you do need a lot of zeros, we need a lot of the techniques, a lot of the expertise that's developed in the other part of the ecosystem. And, and so collaboration and the big bets is all about how do we connect different sections of the thinking, different sections of the communities together so that we can solve the problems in a big way. The mistake the world makes is, is a lot of times people who have a lot of brains who have money and so on, they have a huge amount of compassion. And that compassion is unquestionable. But the, they always start asking the wrong question. They say, what can I give that I have? And a lot of the smart people have brains. So what they want to do is they want to come up with a solution. And most of the time, those solutions are inappropriate. So the new conversation that we want to have is that these people who have already been pretty entrepreneurial, pretty excited, pretty creative about solving their own problems, has solved the problems, but how do we enable them to scale those solutions? Scale the solutions without dramatically changing the solution itself, because sometimes what happens is that the solutions that are appropriate for these people don't look appropriate for the people who live another life. In fact, I would dare to say that in US, we don't have too many nonprofits who come out with solutions that have scaled. Mostly because the solutions are driven by the boards, by the people who are doing well, who are very thoughtful. And they always tend to over-feature the solution 
and they become too expensive and they're not scalable. So the new conversation that we want to have is that what is the API? What is the interface that we need to develop between people who can do systems thinking, people who have resources, who can do financial engineering, people who can work on, with government policies and so on. How do, we, how do we bring all these capabilities to these solutions where people co-create the solutions and they're more or less pretty good? I mean, they always need a little bit of fine tuning, but, but how do we do that without changing the whole product itself? Because solutions that are appropriate for people who live on $2 a day, $4 a day, $8 a day, $10 a day, are very different than the solutions that people with a lot higher income. The scaling that we have to do, you know, a lot of you yesterday and most of you have seen Akshay Patra, which is a beautiful program, and, but it only does 1.6 million meals a day. The real need in the country is 100 million. So even though 1.6 is very impressive, it's 1.6% of the solution. So how do you take it up to 100 mil? You also have farm ponds. That's like 1,000 farm ponds a year. How do we, how do we scale that? So, so I think even after you find a good solution, we don't have the mechanisms today to scale them. And so how do we perfect those solutions? How do we bring new ways of thinking? How do we really collaborate? And, and if something is working, how do we take big bets to really scale them? Mm -hmm.